Hi, today we're at Rye Harbour in Sussex. Now over the years I must have visited this site a dozen times and as I'm walking around today I'm thinking to myself have I ever taken a picture here? And I don't think I ever have. It's like most nature reserves it's better for bird watching than it is photography. They're usually too far away. Having said that I have seen other people's pictures of nesting Mediterranean gulls taken here which were clearly from one of the several wooden hides and they were good pictures it just hasn't worked when, when I've been here but I do live a good distance away so I'm not a regular but today as I've walked around there is a very large flock of golden plovers now I've seen flocks of 100 to 200 golden plovers before but this is more 1000 or possibly 2000 and as soon as I saw it I thought this is worth waiting for so I set the gear up and what I really want is for that flock of golden plovers to take off all at once and there's a very good chance that will happen a peregrine will fly over and they'll all take to the air and that could be spectacular now my first dilemma which I always have these days do I take stills pictures or do I take video these days I give priority to video but this if the sun was shining I'd have gone for stills pictures because the golden plover is a very colourful bird and if you've got thousands of them in the air and the sun was striking them it'd be a very strong picture but it's not that sunny most of the time it's very overcast and video handles dull lighting better than stills pictures and it doesn't matter about the background if you've got a grey sky with video it doesn't matter nearly as much as with a stills picture where well, I usually want a blue sky or a dark sky but if it's a grey whitish sky video handles that better and it looks like the sun shining even when it isn't when you're shooting video so I'm going to concentrate on video and in particular I want to use the 240 frames per second slow motion you get that on the Sony A1 but you drop down to high definition instead of 4k normally I'm shooting 4k but I haven't used the 240 frames per second very much up till now so I'm interested to see how that looks it's roughly 10 times slow motion. If I sound a bit funny today, it's because I had flu all last week and I'm still heavily congested. Certainly my voice sounds very odd to me, but um, anyway. One of the other problems I've had today is it's been very windy. And I mentioned this in a previous uh, YouTube video. The wind hits this lens and it vibrates it. And you can see it in the viewfinder. Now, it doesn't matter for stills photography, assuming you're using 500th of a second and upwards, that wouldn't be a problem. But for video, it looks terrible. You can see the image vibrating. And there wasn't much I could do about it in the previous video because I was sitting down on a stool. I couldn't move. If I moved, all the birds would have flown off. But here I could. So I had quite a bit of success today. I started the video running. I lined it up on my subject. And then I just put my body between the wind. The wind was coming that way and the lens and that cut the vibration out a lot. What I also could have done is took the lens hood off. I should have done that. That would have helped as well, reducing the size of the sail. But I, didn't, I didn't think of that at the time. But anyway, just putting my body there made a big difference. And I haven't got my small rig device on. That's on my heavier tripod. And because I knew I was going to walk a long way around the reserve, I've only brought the lighter tripod with me. So I've left the camera running, but you can see there's vibration here caused by that wind. But now I move my body to the side of the lens and act as a windshield. And now you can see the vibration has reduced. Something I need to do more often. So here we have footage taken at normal speed. And you're having to concentrate and watch these birds looking for when you think they're going to take off and they do give themselves away. It is possible to guess when they're going to take off. They take up a certain posture. I liked it when they gathered on this particular island. It was nice and isolated. And then you're just watching the birds. But unfortunately here they take off at the back and it passes through the crowd but the ones at the front don't actually leap into the air. And it's those that were the important ones. I really wanted those to, to go up. They do eventually. It's just delayed action. There we go.
They look quite spectacular when they're flying around in the sky. It's not as dramatic as those wonderful spectacles you get at places like Snettersham in Norfolk, where the knot swarm around in huge numbers. But it's nice to be doing a different species. And I think golden plovers are a very attractive bird. So these are now taken in slow motion. This is 120 frames per second in 4K. Notice the birds turn upside down at times. Very dramatic. Notice here that the birds that are arriving appear to push the existing birds up into the air. And I saw this happen on several occasions. At other times you can see that a predator has disturbed them, usually a sparrowhawk. On even more occasions you can see no reason why they took off. They just suddenly launched into the air. There probably was something there, I just couldn't see it. Now this clip is at normal speed and it looks far too fast and I've noticed this since I've started to film wildlife. You really need to slow it down to make it look natural. So we're looking at that same clip again but now it's going at half speed and that looks as I remembered it. That seems more natural. But I've noticed this on the telly too now that I watch a lot of wildlife films from the point of view of somebody trying to do it a lot of the wildlife footage we see on TV is slowed down a bit. Wildlife actually doesn't move as slowly as you're looking at. Another clip where the incoming birds disturb the birds already in the roost. Now I didn't try to do an accurate count of these birds, but just to give you an idea of the numbers and how you count birds. You certainly don't try and do it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that would be impossible. You tend to group them. So if I freeze that frame in the, in the right hand corner, you try and identify a clump of 10, then 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 and then you group that lot. So now you've got a group of about 100. You're just doing this with your eye. So now there's 200, 300 and very quickly you can count a group of a thousand birds. Now we've moved on to 240 frames per second. We drop down from 4K video to high definition. Can you see a difference in the quality? Well, I wouldn't think you can looking on YouTube. It's very compressed on YouTube. On my monitor, I can just about see a difference. But this is not the best test because the light was pretty poor. And I'd rather do a comparison test in better lighting conditions. But I've always enjoyed slow motion at 120 frames per second. And now I think I enjoy 240 frames per second even more. Just think wildlife in slow motion looks fantastic. There's a few lapwings mixed up with them. The lapwing is the black and white bird. And as these birds land, again they are disturbing the birds that's already there. 
And if you watch the golden plovers in the left hand corner, bottom corner, you'll see them tense up about there. They're tensing up, and now you can see they're about to take off. But you have to concentrate very hard if you are going to take stills pictures to know when to press the button. I didn't get any individual shots of golden plovers, it was all big flocks. So I'll just finish off with a couple of stills pictures I've taken on the moorlands of this very attractive bird. During the months of May and June when they're hatching, they often come close to the, the roads going across moorlands. So they're frequently easy to photograph. They've got chicks at this point, and when they've got chicks, they need to keep an eye on them. So they tend to climb up on little humps like this, where they can see the chicks. So on moorlands in Yorkshire and Scotland, and especially the Hebridean Islands or Shetlands, this sort of photography of this lovely bird is quite easy to do. Thanks for watching.